In this video, I'll work through some sample problems on writing proofs using mathematical induction. So in our first example, we have this recursively defined sequence, and we want to write a proof that we have a closed formula for the sequence, a sub n equals 2 to the n minus 1. So here's how we're going to structure our proofs by induction. The first thing we want to do is we want to give a name to the statement that we're trying to prove. So in this case, we want to say let p of n represent the statement, quote, a sub n equals 2 to the n minus 1. Now remember, our goal is to prove that this statement is true when n equals 1, when n equals 2, when n equals 3, and so on. And the way we're going to do this is by writing a proof by induction. Now a proof by induction comes in two steps. The first step is to prove that the statement is true for the first positive integer, namely 1, and then after that we have our induction step. This base case, this started case, is usually pretty simple, and then the induction step is a little bit complicated, but we'll get to that. So first things first, we want to look at what does p of 1 say? So p of 1 says, I'm putting in 1 for the n, so it says a sub 1 equals 2 to the 1 minus 1. Now we're told up here that a sub 1 equals 1, and so that matches. So since a sub 1 equals 1, this is true. And it usually isn't much more complicated than that. Usually the base case is pretty straightforward based on the information that you're given. Now we get to the more complicated part of our induction proof, which is the induction step. What we're doing is we're assuming that we've proved that this statement is true for one or more positive integers. And then we want to prove that the next case that we haven't yet proven must be true based on what we've already done. So the way we say this is we say let m greater than or equal to 2, right, because we've already done the case of 1, so we want to say that the next case that we haven't done is at least at m equals 2. So we say let m greater than or equal to 2 be such that p of 1 all the way up through p of m minus 1 have all been proved to be true. This is a phrase that you're going to have in pretty much any induction proof that you're going to write. This, so let m greater than or equal to 2 be such that p of 1 through p of m minus 1 have all been proved to be true. And now our goal, and we don't write this, but this is what we're thinking to ourselves, our goal is to prove p of m. Typically there's some way in the way that the problem has been set up to use all of those facts that we've proven to prove the next one. So again, that what I've just written in green there, you're not going to write that in your proof, but that's what we're thinking. What we're shooting for now is to prove p of m. So if we think of our p of n statement, p of m says that a sub m equals 2 to the m minus 1. So what do we know about a sub m? Well, we have this recursive definition that a sub k is 2 times a k minus 1 for k greater than or equal to 2. Well, m is greater than or equal to 2, so that recursive definition is going to work for us now. So we say a sub m is 2 times a sub m minus 1 plus 1 by the recursive definition. That's what we're given. But we also know that p of m minus 1 has been proved to be true. We know that p of m minus 1, which says a sub m minus 1 equals 2 to the m minus 1 minus 1. We know that that's true. We're assuming that that has already been proved. And so we can substitute that in. We have 2 times the quantity 2 to the m minus 1 minus 1. And then we still have our plus 1. And now what we have to do is some algebra. Let's distribute that 2, so we get 2 times 2 to the m minus 1, minus 2, plus 1. We can think of 2 as 2 to the first power, which means that we can add those exponents. That's going to give us 2 to the m, and then negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and that's 2 to the m minus 1. And that's what we wanted. Remember, our goal was to prove that p of m was true. p of m says that a sub m equals 2 to the m minus 1. We just did that, and so we're done. And so the only thing we have left to do is to say that we're done, to draw our conclusion here. And so the way that we're going to write this, and again, this is going to be pretty similar in most of the induction proofs that you write, we're going to say, therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, P of n is true for all positive integers n. And again,
again, that's a pretty standard conclusion to write at the end of an induction proof. We're saying, hey, I did the base case, I did the induction step, all of that together by that principle of mathematical induction tells me that I've proved the thing that I was trying to prove. Okay, let's do another example. This one involves sums, so you're going to see some differences, but you're also going to see some similarities. So try to focus on the similarities, try to focus on the things that are the same for this proof as the proof that we just did. One similarity is that we're going to start out in a similar way. We're going to give a name to the statement that we're trying to prove. So we're going to let P of n represent the statement, the sum as i goes from 1 to n of 2i minus 1 is equal to n squared. And again, similarly, the way that we're going to prove this by induction is to prove the base case and to use the induction step. The base case is when n equals 1. That's the first uh, integer that we want to prove this for. So, so we start with p of 1. p of 1 says that the sum as i goes from 1 to 1 of 2i minus 1 is equal to 1 squared. Now that's a little less obvious than the p of 1 that we had before, so we need to unpack this. We have that the sum as i goes from 1 to 1 of 2i minus 1. Well, that's just one thing to add, right? i starts at 1 and then i ends at 1, so there's only one thing to add, and the one thing that we have to add is 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1. So that's the left-hand side of that equation. The right-hand side of that equation is 1 squared, which also equals 1. So that means that p of 1 is true. So we have to work a little bit harder for the base case there, but still not too bad. And now, again, we're going to write a similar phrase identical to what we wrote in the previous proof. We're going to say for the induction step, let m greater than or equal to 2 be such that p of 1 through p of m minus 1 have all been proved to be true. And then again, we're not actually going to write this down, but what we're thinking to ourselves is that our goal now is to prove P of M. That's what we're trying to do. If we can do that, then we'll be done by the principle of mathematical induction. So what we're going to do is look at what does P of M actually say. So what we can think to ourselves is that P of M says, and again, I'm writing this on a little cloud bubble here because this is what we're thinking. We're not actually writing this down. But P of M says that the sum as I goes from 1 to M of 2i minus 1 should equal m squared. So let's start with the left-hand side of that equation and see if we can turn it into the right-hand side of the equation. So to prove p of m, consider the sum i goes from 1 to m of 2i minus 1. So that's going to start out as 2 times 1 minus 1 plus 2 times 2 minus 1 plus, plus, plus. Now, as you'll see, when we do these sums, typically you don't want to write the very last term. You want to write the next to last term. Since my sum ends at m, my next to last term is going to be m minus 1, minus 1. And then finally, 2 times m minus 1. So that's my complete sum if I expand that out a little bit. I've still got a dot, dot, dot because I don't know exactly how many terms I have, but those are the terms that I'm looking at. And so the key here, and, and again, you'll see this as you do more of these with sums, the key observation is to realize, hey, look, if I group together everything but that last term, then that is the sum as i goes from 1 to m minus 1 of 2i minus 1. And then I'm still adding 2m minus 1. So that red bracketed sum there, that's everything up to m minus 1. And again, I have proved p of m minus 1. p of m minus 1 says the sum as i goes from 1 to m minus 1 of 2i minus 1 is m minus 1 squared. And I know that. I'm assuming that I've already proved that that part's true. So this is m minus 1 squared by our assumption plus 2m minus 1. And now I just have some algebra to do. Multiply out m minus 1 squared, I get m squared minus 2m plus 1, plus 2m minus 1. Lots of canceling going on there. Cancel, 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 cancel. 
and I just get m squared, which was what we wanted. Remember, we wanted to prove that this was equal to m squared, and we just did. And so now the last thing that we have to do is to wrap it up, just like we did in the previous problem. So we say, therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, and yes, you do have to write all that out if you're in my class, our statement P of n is true for all positive integers n. So that's a couple examples of induction proofs. Again, I hope you notice the similarities, the things that are the same no matter what it is that you're proving by induction, but then again also the differences. When we're dealing with a recursive sequence, there's certain things that we need to do. When we're dealing with a sum, uh, that grouping everything but the last term is a pretty typical method that you'll see for those as well. So keep working on these, keep looking at examples, and uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions.